Hello, Mandy. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Good. How have things been going for you? <clears throat> well, you know, I've still been going through a lot of, you know, I've had some pretty funky days, you know, feeling pretty heavy and everything. But mm -hmm. um, not that, you know, things have gotten, like, completely resolved from, you know, the, the, the loss and everything. But the um, I will say kind of trying to manage those goals um, and it kind of stirred up some kind of hope or whatever. Like, you know, I'm going somewhere now, mm -hmm. you know, at some point. The exercise especially. Um, the sleep. That was tough for a few days because in trying to get my sleep back right, um, sometimes I would just lay there in bed and wondering when the sleep was going to come. Right. You know, the journaling was tough. It kind of stirred things up a little bit, but I felt like some of those things should come out. Okay, all right. So it sounds like there's been a little bit of progress here and there on different goals. As you think about three goals that you'd really like to focus on moving forward, what three really stand out for you? The one that I, I really didn't I, I didn't touch on this week, I think it would probably be a good thing, even though it's um, tedious to think about, is like uh, reconnecting with my support system. Mm -hmm. You know, I think would probably be a good idea. But I really want to keep the other things too. Um, you know, um, I, I definitely want to keep the sleep going. But I really think that's probably accomplished for the most part. I just need to continue to do what I'm doing because. Now that I'm back in sync with my sleeping, I don't want to go back because it's so hard to get back in sync. So really probably the, um, the exercise, uh, the journal, and maybe reconnecting with the support system. Okay, so really I'm hearing the four goals, mm -hmm. and one of those really fits into the first one a bit, too, because mm -hmm. the journaling you were doing right before you went to bed yeah. as well. Okay, so let's start looking at the sleep one first, and then we'll try to work through each one of them. And the real objective for today is to identify objectives. So mm -hmm. you have a goal, okay, and in the goal what we want to do is establish when do you want to try to maybe not fully achieve it, but kind of what's a target date for reviewing that goal. Mm -hmm. And then um, in that we're going to determine how are you going to measure success. Uh, and while trying to be realistic, making it achievable as well. Okay, so very specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Okay. So when you think about sleep, we talked mm -hmm. about this a little bit last time, but how much sleep do you want to have each, each night? Um, I think I typically do well um, with somewhere between um, seven and nine hours. Okay, seven yeah. to nine. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, for you, it was really getting to sleep yeah. that was really the struggle. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So when do you think, based off how much um, progress you've made in the last week, what do you think would be a good target date to try to reach seven to nine solid hours of sleep? Well, I was able to make like a modicum of improvement, you know, this past week. So, you know, I would think within the next two weeks, um, I hope within the next two weeks I'd be able to get there. Okay. All right. So maybe mid-April then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So April 15th. Okay. We could say by April 15th, you will try to have seven to nine hours of sleep mm -hmm. at least five days a week. Okay. Does that sound reasonable for the goal that you are trying to reach? Yeah. That sounds reasonable. I think that's doable. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so now what we have to do is really identify... Um, what are the, the little steps that need to happen in order to make that achievable? Mm -hmm. So thinking back over the last week, what did you do that was helpful? I, th I think um, I really kind of unplugged from electronics uh, earlier, mm -hmm. um, which kind of helped. And even if I wasn't um, really, really sleepy, um, I went to bed anyway, like at the time that I wanted to go to bed. I think if I continue down this road, like, you know, getting the shower beforehand is like, you know, soothing, unplugging um, early is helpful. Not reading emails maybe hours and hours before, you know, because sometimes that can stir me up. Right. I think those would all, all, all are very helpful. Okay. All right. So under the main goal of by April 15th, you'll try to have seven to nine hours of sleep at least five days a week you are looking at implementing the journaling. Okay, mm -hmm. what does that involve for you? 
that's that was probably the most emotionally tedious thing that I did mm -hmm. um, because I, you know I had to connect with the things that were bothering me the most and it stirred things up and and you know definitely don't want to do that in the later part of the day because then I think it would just interrupt the sleep more. So um, I think journaling maybe first thing in the morning would probably be um, a good thing uh, to do. And um, I, I didn't always have like a, a set goal of journaling. I just journaled, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. whatever came up, came out. Right. And so one of the things that might be helpful at some point is for us to talk about some different structures for journaling to see if the, the way you do the journaling may help you contain it mm -hmm. more than open it up. Because there's different structures for journaling for that. Okay. Um, so the other thing you talked about was taking a shower before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. And you're doing that a little bit before you're actually going to bed. And mm -hmm. that seems to be working. Yeah, that's common. Okay. Yeah. So that feels like a good part of your, solid part of your routine. Absolutely. So that's a maintenance objective. To maintain mm -hmm. taking a shower before you go to bed as part of your mm -hmm. sleep routine. Mm -hmm. How, about how much time before you're actually going to try to go to bed do you actually shower? Usually about an hour, between an hour and two hours before. Um, that's like a segue, you know, mm -hmm. like if I'm doing something, if I'm reading, if I'm watching TV or whatever, like I'll shower and then, you know, I'll start kind of backing off of things and trying to kind of chill a little bit. Okay, so it can kind of be a benchmark for, okay, now I'm going to do things that are going to facilitate mm -hmm. sleep. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the shower being this marker in your evening, what would be the things that you wouldn't want to do after a shower that might inhibit sleep? Definitely the journaling, um, watching like action movies, listening to uh, music that reminds me of the relationship, um, talking to anybody that uh, is connected with the situation that might ask about the situation. Mm -hmm. Really, um, I'm almost thinking now that we talk about it, like dividing the day up when possible. You never can, you know, tell when someone's going to call you out of the blue or whatever. Right. But um, really kind of maybe doing some of the work that requires bringing this up and dealing with it earlier in the day. Maybe almost like compartmentalizing in that fashion, still working on it. But then definitely not inviting it in, in the latter part of the day, particularly after the shower. Okay. And are you at a point with your own boundaries where you could just not engage in conversations about it after the shower? Like not taking texts, not taking phone calls? Um, yeah, there, there are some nights um, because of my work mm -hmm. that uh, I, I will get texts from colleagues and whatnot. And so it's hard to, um, to unplug completely. And when you're accepting texts from one person, you accept texts from everybody kind of thing. Um, but, you know, what I'll say is, I, you know, I, I haven't gotten a lot of late night text, you know, about the situation in a while. So it doesn't feel um, um, as much of an issue as it, as it did at one point. Okay. All right. So I'm hearing you say you feel like you can protect that space between shower and bed. Yeah. Okay. All right. So some of the objectives I'm hearing under sleep then are taking the shower an hour to two hours beforehand and really mm -hmm. using that shower as the marker mm -hmm. for, okay, now it's going to be getting ready to go to sleep and mm -hmm. I'm going to do things that really facilitate going to sleep. So mm -hmm. I'm going to avoid real high energy, um, you know, electronic interaction, um, emails, text from other people that might be engaging in that or even journaling because it can bring up some emotions for you that may not help you get to sleep. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Is there anything else that you can think of that um, would be helpful to have in thinking about how to get to sleep, ways to help you get to sleep? Well, you know, some things I think about excluding, like the journaling and the texting. And, you know, also um, one of the things that I was doing before was like, you know, my, my, my eating was like all skewed and everything. And so, um, you know, when I want comfort, I want comfort food, and none of that's really great for, you know, sleep mm -hmm. by and large. So, like, really staying away from, you know, um, the, the comfort food late at night is really probably a good thing. Okay. Um, that would be uh, definitely one thing that I would, um, I would do. Okay, and also maybe using that shower again as the marker. Yeah. That, you know, you're not going to do any of that type of eating after the shower. Yeah, that would probably be. Okay, all right. 
And then before I remember too that you had been using NyQuil to help with mm -hmm. the sleep. How's mm -hmm. that going? Um, I'm off the NyQuil. Mm -hmm. uh, after I ran out of the last bottle, I just kind of, you know, I didn't buy any more. Um, that made the sleep transition really tough because um, you know, that stuff knocked me out and mm -hmm. it worked and it worked well. Right. Um, but uh, you know, then when you, you came off of it, it was like you know, it was not as easy to to get to sleep. So. Right, because your body was used to having an aid yeah. for sleep. Sure. Mm -hmm. Have you considered um, utilizing any other type of sleep aids, or you know, looking to maybe medications that are actually meant for sleeping and assisting in sleeping? Well, I was gonna, I was gonna kind of talk to you about that. Um, and to see what your recommendations might be, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, on one hand, it's like I don't like I, I don't want to become dependent on on a, on a medication, but you know, right now, that seems like it would it might be beneficial, like you know, something like a, an Ambien or a Lunestra, one of these things that I see on TV mm -hmm. when I'm staying up too late. You right. Know? I remember from some of our previous conversations that uh, you have used a holistic doctor in the past mm -hmm. uh, for some of your, you know, just maintenance, mm -hmm. daily care types of things. So are you still seeing that same doctor? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So have you had a chance to talk to her about um, any medications regarding this? Um, she recommended the melatonin, I believe. Okay. Um, and that's something I haven't uh, tried, but I'd be willing to try. Okay. All right. So, you know, my role as a counselor is really in encouraging you to utilize the resources that are available to you. And mm -hmm. since you have an existing relationship with that doctor, mm -hmm. she has prescribing privileges. I don't. And so I would really encourage you to continue that conversation. Mm -hmm. If she's made recommendations, you know, there's certainly no harm in following through on them and, and seeing what the effect is so that you can report back to her what's going on. <clears throat> One of the things that I can help you with in my role is doing a check-in because likely I'll see you more often than she will. Mm -hmm. And so that we could create some sort of check-in where I'm saying, okay, how often are you using it? You know, have you noticed any side effects? You know, what's going on? Because sometimes as a counselor, I might notice side effects or make connections between things that start happening that you might not notice, mm -hmm. right? So my job is to understand the side effects and the uh, ongoing possible interactions with other things so that I can say, hey, that's probably something you'd want to bring up to your doctor and talk to your doctor about or really encourage you to follow through with seeing your doctor about concerns or anything that comes up. But mm -hmm. it sounds like she's really looking at this holistically and giving you some options that aren't prescription related, but that maybe is kind of an intermediary fix between you know, nothing and going to something that's prescribed. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about the melatonin recommendation? I'm okay. You know, I read a little bit about it. It seems, you know, I mean, it's naturally occurring. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I definitely don't. Um, I, I'm wondering, I'm curious, I'm not sure if it's, um, if it'll work, but I'm open to trying it. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, make sure you follow through on all the doctor's recommendations because um, most doctors, when they, um, recommend melatonin, they also attach that caveat that you need to get outside and have exposure to sun as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure she probably mentioned that to you. So make sure you're taking the full recommendation. It's often not enough just to take the pill and everything's good and done. Mm -hmm. There's usually other pieces, especially with the herbal remedies that you have to do to really make it effective. Mm -hmm. uh, so make sure you go back and if you need to follow up with her with a phone call to find out exactly what and how you would need to do it, like how much melatonin, at what point should you be taking it, and you know, make sure you give all the details so that you're using it to its fullest. Sure. Okay. So that will be something else in the objective, maybe following up on the recommendation of melatonin mm -hmm. with your, you know, from your doctor. And seeing that, when do you see her next? Um, I think I'm about two two months out. Okay, you know, right. I just saw her like a, a month or, or so ago. Okay, all mm. right. Well, if you don't have those instructions written down, I would mm. really encourage you to follow up with a phone call, and I'm sure. sure she'd be happy to go over them again with you. Yeah, I can do that. That's not a problem. Okay, great, yeah. perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, and it's so nice that so many doctors are moving yeah, to that. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> okay. Um, so the other thing you mentioned was um, connecting with your support group, but I think you said exercise was another big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was able to, um, you know, I was able to, I, I got a couple of days, you know, uh, um, exercising in, you know, which mm -hmm. was a step up from nothing. Right. You know, so mm -hmm. that, that worked out really well for me. Um, it was like, 
um, really moving through mud initially. Really? Um, it was like, it felt kind of like starting all over. Um, but I was able to kind of get in there and, and um, it felt good to be, you know, journeying towards the direction I needed to go in, mm -hmm. you know, at this point. So um, that made, um, that, that increased the, the hopefulness for some reason. I don't right. know. Maybe it's just beginning a journey or feeling like I'm moving in a direction and not just like, you know, standing still or whatever. But that seemed to really kind of help out a lot with my mood this week, I mm -hmm. think. Well, you know, there's actually two benefits to that. Um, not only is it that you're setting a goal and you're actually working towards it, which inspires motivation and a sense of hope, but there's also the physical in it, that when mm -hmm. you physically exercise, that your body releases chemicals that actually make you feel better, mm -hmm. and, you know, emotionally. So there is a link physically and emotionally to you doing the exercise, one, for achieving the goal, and two, the actual act of exercising releases certain chemicals within your body that will literally make you feel better. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, you know, neurobiological, neuroscience, quite fascinating to see how the body works and, and encouraging us to continue. Uh, what is your preferred exercise routine? Um, I usually do um, some cardio and then like uh, a, a little, res I even did some resistance training, some circuit training or Okay, and so when you say some cardio, how much yeah. cardio would that be? Um, well, I was up to mm, somewhere around 30 minutes. Um, this past week, I did about 15 to 20, you know, mm -hmm. something like that, and that was cumbersome. Right, you know. so it took some effort. Oh, yeah. Okay, so ultimately, would you like to get back to that 30 minutes? Yeah, I think that would be a good goal. Okay, yeah. all right, and then when you say resistance training, can you give me some more specifics on what that includes yeah. and how long? So, you know, I would do in the past maybe about 20 minutes of uh, cardio and then maybe about 40 minutes of resistance training or whatnot. And the resistance training, you know, I did a lot of uh, uh, um, circuits. So I would do a one exercise for every body part, right, you know, like combined almost with each other, like, you know, one mm -hmm. set um, in sequence um, without any rest. And, and then I would take a rest after one complete circuit. And then I would do like three to four circuits. Okay. All right. So you enjoyed the circuit resistance type training. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. you have a membership to a gym? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And so ideally, how many days a week would you like to work out? Well, before I was doing four, um, it was a struggle to make it into this past week. I would like to get back up to four. Okay. And then I'm not sure next week that's going to happen. It right. doesn't feel real. Right. You know? Not yet. No. Okay, so when would you like to be back up to that 20 cardio, 40 resistance? I'd like to be there within three to four weeks. Okay, all um, right. So maybe the end of April? End of April, that, that sounds reasonable. Okay, April 30th. So one of the really good things about having, say, an April 30th, dead, you know, kind of goal set for yourself and check mm -hmm. in with yourself is that each week we can increase a little bit. Right. So it's not like, oh, I have to jump back into four days a week, at, you know, this level. So this past week, you did about 15 minutes of cardio. Mm -hmm. Did you do any resistance this time? I did one circuit. Okay. Normally in the past, I, I did three to four. All so. right. All right. So one circuit. Um, you know, what would you like to do next week? I could try to add two circuits next week. Okay. So maybe keep the 15 cardio and two circuits for the yeah. next week. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's reasonable. Okay, and what about the next week? We're going to have it across four weeks. I think um, maybe um, adding five minutes on the cardio mm -hmm. and one circuit. Okay, so if you're talking about doing 20 cardio and three circuits then right. in week two. Right. All right. Um, you know, it might even be reasonable to just say 20 minutes of cardio and two circuits for sure. that one. You don't yeah. have to increase both. Yeah, um, and that then, would probably be more realistic. Okay, yeah. all right, so 20 and two. And yeah. then the third week? Well, I would say, you know, adding a, uh, definitely adding a circuit at that point. Okay, so yeah. 20 cardio, three circuits. Right. And then in the last week? 20 and four. 20 and four. Yeah, so each week you're yeah. increasing one thing. Yeah. Okay, and we'll write all this down. 
you know, before you go. Oh, that's so, good because I, I don't know if I'd hold on. To <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so that's a four week plan for getting back up to your goal sure. of that. So each one of those can be objectives too. So mm-hmm. it's like little steps, right? So the mm-hmm. first objective is to do the 15 and two circuits, and mm-hmm. then you'll go uh, 20 and three circuits or 20 and two circuits and then 20 and three circuits and then 20 and four circuits. That sounds reasonable. Okay. Yeah. All right. Little bit by little bit. Now, how do you want to do as far as the number of times across the week that you're going? So how many times did you get to go last week? I did two last week. Okay. All right. And I want to build up to four, mm-hmm. you know, um, in the, in the past when I was firing on all cylinders, I didn't get much beyond four. So I think four is a reasonable goal. Um, by, you know, by the end of April. Okay. All right. So thinking about again, across a four week span. Mm -hmm. All right. How many times would you like to go next week? Now be realistic with yourself. I think since we're adding a little bit, that just stickling with the two next week. All right. And then for week two, I think then we could add probably, um, an extra. Okay. So two, three, and then about week three. Three. Three, and then try to shoot for the four on the yeah. fourth week. I okay. think that's, that's reasonable. That seems to make sense. Okay. All right. Now, here's something that a lot of people really don't consider when they set goals. You know, I mean, obviously, there's this intrinsic reward for doing exercise because you probably are going to have these chemical reactions that make you just feel better, and you're mm-hmm. going to feel good. But what's the kind of reward that you could give yourself if you're able to achieve each goal? Hmm. Um, well, I enjoy music, so maybe purchasing some more music. Okay, you know? all right. Yeah, so for each week when you achieve your goal, you know, so if next week you go twice, you know, and you're able to do 15 minutes of cardio and, mm-hmm. you know, two circuits, then, you know, purchasing some music and really encouraging and rewarding yourself. Maybe not music related to the relationship, yeah. but music that, you know, you're looking forward to having or being able to listen to. Well, I think that's really, um, I mean, I think it's a, um, a great reward because right now I'm trying to really rebuild um, my, my mu- music library because so much of my music, you know, anchors me in that past relationship. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's why I stopped um, listening to which music is really relaxing for me, but not when it reminds me of the relationship. So mm-hmm. um, I think it's really pertinent um, for me, like, you know, getting different music at this point mm-hmm. you know right really freshening up the music and mm-hmm. finding things that won't take you back to that yes okay all right good so talked a little bit about sleep we've talked about exercise what was the other goal that you wanted to work on journaling was that yeah. one of them mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. then journaling you know i really like to maybe spend some time in a session working on journaling because there's mm-hmm. different techniques that you can use for journaling mm-hmm. to um help you because i think that journaling can open up things yeah. uh but it doesn't have to well you mentioned different structures mm-hmm. for journaling yeah uh, what did you mean by that well i mean um you know i have seen so many different styles of journals okay and a lot of people think journaling is just sitting there and writing what's off the top of my head or mm-hmm. you know things but we can actually give you formats for journals mm-hmm. so that maybe you're doing a thought log or maybe you're um, challenging irrational thoughts, or mm. maybe you're picking a song that has bothered you and identifying what it is about the song that's triggering for you and really mm. you know, going through that process to maybe even take that power away from that song so mm. that it doesn't have the same impact mm. that it had. So making it a very active process to help you with real things that are going on. That sounds great. Yeah, so yeah. there's different ways that you can journal. Right now, how often are you journaling? I did, um, well, I did that twice um, this past mm-hmm. week. Um, you know, uh, the first time it really kind of stirred things up, right. so it took me a few days to try again. I thought, oh, I'll try this again. Mm-hmm. Um, stirred things up, not quite as bad as the first day. Um, I feel like it's one of those things that it's like meaningful, but not easy. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, I was doing good to get back to one last week. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. So what would be your ultimate goal for journaling? What would be the outcome? The outcome? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I was kind of thinking about, you know, that as I was, you know, finishing up my last journal entry and I was thinking um, if I could, you know, if I could sit down and write a journal with, without 
having a lot of the stuff come up, you know, the painful stuff. It seems like that would be like a huge indicator that uh, of healing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know what that looks like, or I don't even know what a time frame would like look like with that. But that that would be like a cool thing to have happen. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the important things to distinguish is before you were numbing and avoiding, and so the goal would actually be to get you to a point where you don't have to numb and avoid but that you can talk about things without it bringing up necessarily those emotional reactions, mm -hmm. you know? So instead of not doing <laughs> to avoid and not have those feelings, you would actually work through some of those feelings so that when things come up, you would have a different response to it. Yeah, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. okay. When you think about the journaling, what are some of the more triggering things for you? Things surrounding the the breakup actually come they, they, um, that that really kind of was a common theme. Um, not making some things did not make sense to me um, cognitively, emotionally, like they just didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And so I would pour over those things, and the more I would like write them out, they you know they stirred anger up, mm -hmm. you know, because I was like, what, you know, this made no sense. This was stupid, you know. And, so that you know that came up a lot. Okay. Right. Have you been doing any reading, supplemental reading, or any readings for yourself no. on anything regarding the relationship? I mean, sometimes people turn to self help books, or mm. you know, somebody might have recommended a book to you, and I was just wondering if you've done any of that type of reading. No, I you know I read a couple of uh, books on uh, grief that people you know gave gave me, and you know those those were cool and everything, um, but uh, not anything specifically um, mm -hmm. geared towards like the breakup. Okay, so sometimes another way um, of journaling is to have something that you're reading. Okay, it might be just a devotional or a thought for the day or a book that you're reading, mm -hmm. and then writing a journal in response to that. You know, maybe reading a small section, just a few pages a day even, and just writing in response to that. And so I was just kind of wondering if you had ever done that type of journaling. No, but I'd be open to it. Okay. Yeah, All that right. sounds cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you've talked a lot about the grief, um, and I'm just wondering if um, there might be some use in you thinking about how you're thinking about things. Uh, so, for example... Uh, sometimes we get stuck. You know, we talked about that well, the hole you felt like you were in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get stuck in holes like that because we believe there are walls taller than what we can reach, but we've mm -hmm. never actually reached up to see if we can reach up. Mm -hmm. You know, we've just absolutely convinced ourselves that's way too high and I can't reach it. Mm -hmm. And therefore we stay sitting in the bottom and not realizing if we just stood up and put our hands up, we could see the top of the hole. You know, so part of this is really thinking about how are you thinking about things mm -hmm. and maybe using a book to um, present a potentially a different perspective. Sure. Do you have any recommendations? Yeah, I've got a couple. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking that um, based off some of what you've already told me, um, we have a couple of routes. We can do a more general, like just thinking about how you relate to people. Okay, and yourself, which I think is an important one. Um, and that might be the best one to start with. There's another book that I can think of that really talks about love relations. Mm -hmm. And because I know you've talked about this bigger issue, is this a pattern? Mm -hmm. Is this a pattern that I'm going to? Is it something mm -hmm. that I'm doing that's causing this pattern? Mm -hmm. So I could go either way. Do either one of those sound? Well, both of them sound good, mm -hmm. you know? I'm not, um, like, I want to work on myself and understand um, my part in this pattern, um, but not as much as I want to get out of where I'm at right now. So okay. maybe the first option. Yeah, let's start with that. And yeah. then if you're interested, we can do the second book afterwards as well. Because yeah. I'll be honest, both of these are pretty quick reads. Okay. Um, especially with someone with your educational level, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, in both of these books, you can get them in written and audio format so you know i don't know what it's like for you uh, i know you work from home but you know for me when i take my kids to school and stuff i might be listening to an audio book because i only have that 20 minutes <laughs> to listen to a book sure. instead of having time to actually read yeah. so you can decide which format's best for you um the first one is the four agreements yeah. it's by don miguel ruiz 
And uh, I do tell everybody the first chapter is a little odd. Okay. It's a little metaphysical, so just kind of go with it. It'll make sense at the end of the book. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the really um, cool things that I like about that particular book is it really gives you four agreements that you can utilize to kind of fall back on so that when you feel yourself getting stuck, you mm -hmm. can go back and go, okay, am I violating one of the four agreements? Which of the four agreements am I using in this moment? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you'll find that you're not following all the four agreements. And uh, what's really unique about the Four Agreements is this: these were the laws of a society of artists and scientists who chose to live together, who came together to create their own culture, basically. And these were their rules for their civilization, their society. It was the Toltec society mm -hmm. um, in what's now Mexico. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that it's a really useful tool, and it'll give you some very concrete tools to use to get out of this hole that you've described. Mm -hmm. And it'll also be something that you can, say, read 10 pages, 5 to 10 pages, whatever time allows mm -hmm. for you in that journaling moment, mm -hmm. and then writing a, a response to it, 5, 10 minutes, sure. to what you've read. That sounds good. Okay. All right. I'm open. So one of the journaling objectives then, at least for this next week, would be to get a copy of mm -hmm. the book. Um, Don Miguel Ruiz's The Four Agreements, mm -hmm. a very popular book. Oprah did it on her show, so it's mm -hmm. very easy to find. Uh, and then after that, we can maybe establish some reading, you know, goals for you in determining how much you want to consume. You know, I've literally had clients read the whole book at one time, which I don't recommend. Mm -hmm. And I've had others who have, you know, just done a few pages at a time and have found that to be most helpful. So it'll really be what's most comfortable to you. Okay, that sounds good. All right. So one of the other goals you mentioned was your support system. And I just, I didn't want to lose sight of that one. I know it wasn't one that you actually mentioned, like, I mm. want to work on right now. But I, I just know that you mm. have said you were isolating pretty significantly. Yeah. Um, I felt like actually going to the gym helped me to reconnect with people a little bit, but mm -hmm. not my, necessarily my support system. Um, I was hesitant, you know, to, to reconnect, you know, this past week because what I recognize is reconnecting with them opens like a can of worms, so mm -hmm. to speak, you know, opens up the door to a lot of questions and a lot of that. I don't think I was really kind of ready for that, um, but it's certainly something I know that I need to do. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll keep that one on the back burner okay. and I'll just touch base with you every now and then and just see, you know, are you ready to work on this one? Mm -hmm. You know, you are, like you said, going to be working on that just by the nature of your routine. Sure. Um, but let's just keep that one here. Um, we don't have to work on everything at one time, which is okay. I'm probably going to set you up for more success. Well, good. Okay. That All right. sounds good. Do you have any other questions at this point or anything else mm -hmm. that you want to kind of strategize on or work on? No, I think, you know, if I'm able to kind of put these goals into place that I'll have my hands full mm -hmm. and, um, and hopefully uh, continuing uh, that, you know, that, that vicarious feeling of, of hope that comes with trying to work towards something, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Well, if you implement these sleep goals, sleep strategies, and you're implementing the exercise, mm -hmm. um, and with the sleep strategy came the better eating, right? Or the choosing mm -hmm. when you ate, <laughs> you know, type of thing. You're going to physically begin to feel better just from the chemical reactions within your body. Uh, so that will feed in with the emotional wellness that you're also investing in. So both those things will work concurrently. We talk about mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's about bringing those three pieces together um, and in harmony so that you can feel the best that you can feel. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So at this point, do you have any questions for me? Or mm -hmm. No, it's, it's felt very thorough. Okay, good. Yeah. One of the things I do want to follow up on is just encouraging you to follow up with your doctor on mm -hmm. her recommendation about mm -hmm. the melatonin, you know, if you feel like that might be helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Not right. in session. I think, you know, the first thing is I would definitely have to write down all of these goals and objectives in order to kind of keep mm -hmm. up with them. Um, they were meaningful, and I feel like uh, if I, you know, if I was in this sit actual situation, if I applied these things, they would most definitely, you know, some of them would work at least. Mm -hmm. um, holding all of those things in, in, um, in, in balance and, you know, um, and taking those home with me to apply. I definitely have to, you know, kind of jot those things down and have them written out for right. me, for myself. You know, one of the things that I find really helpful is in my physical practice, I've always maintained a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. 
And that has been really useful, even in this day and age of technology. Oftentimes, I'll write the goals out and put the objectives under each goal so that the client can see them. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, sometimes they'll be like, oh, I can't do that, <laughs> you know, and we'll adjust. And I can show, oh, look how easy it is. We just adjust and just do that. But then what I also have always kept near my chair is a, a writing pad and a pen. Mm -hmm. And then I don't write the goals down because one of the things that I found is that when someone writes the goals down for themselves, mm -hmm. they tend to internalize them more. Um, I agree. Yeah. And one of the other things I've also noted is that in this day and age, it's been a shift in my practice is that more and more clients are relying on their phones. Mm -hmm. And so two things will happen now. Either clients will ask to take a picture of the whiteboard. Can I take a picture of that? Of course. Or they'll jot it down in some sort of app or like a calendar app or things like that. So utilizing the technology to help mm -hmm. the clients remember and set goals and even set the rewards for themselves is a mm -hmm. really useful tool as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Was there anything else that stood out for you you wanted to mention to the you know class to students about that you found you might need to highlight? You know, um, I, I think the way that you kind of structured things um, with the goals and objectives uh, made sense. And I think your explanation, almost like a little bit of a psychoeducational piece mm -hmm. there, helped me to kind of begin to organize um, how I might work with you on establishing the goals and objectives. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas if I didn't have an understanding of those things, um, I don't think it would have um, uh, you know, been as um, collaborative as it was. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, we also had a conversation about pharmacology mm -hmm. and um, what did you take from that as what my role was in that? Well, I think that you were very directive in, in your role. Um, you you kind of really laid that out, what you what you can do and what, and what you don't. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, and, which I think is really um, incredibly ethical and, and important. Uh, you know, because I, I recognize that um, I, could, I could understand clients not understanding your role. Some clients can come in asking you to write scripts for them, what have you, um, or calling you up and asking you to adjust medication or whatnot, really kind of keeping that as a clear boundary. Mm -hmm. you know? Right, yeah. That, you know, as counselors, we have a responsibility to understand medication, but we can't make recommendations about medication or change, what a doctor has said or anything. And, and one of the pieces that I really kept stressing was that relationship with your doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, to maintain that relationship and to follow up with your doctor, which I really think is our role is to advocate for that collaborative relationship between mm -hmm. the client and the doctor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and if I had picked up on any hesitancy on your part, I would have explored that more to understand that. Um, you know, it, are you having trouble communicating with your doctor? Are you forgetting to what you want to tell your doctor? You know, and then really problem solve with the client about how to better communicate with the doctor or explore what difficulties they might be having with the doctor. Yeah, sure. But medication management um, doesn't equate to medication manipulation. Right. You're just encouraging what's uh, been prescribed by the doctor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So. And having that open communication with the mm -hmm. doctor. Okay. Absolutely. Anything else we should highlight? I, don't, I think we, we covered the, the, um, the basics at the very least. Okay, very good.